very good afternoon to all of you this is dr kosu bondre and we are looking at today's the hindu we'll analyze this newspaper to understand what is important in today's newspaper for upsc examination especially and then any competitive examination for that matter at the end of this video please review us and give your feedback that will help me to improve my presentation next time the first news that we deal with is regarding the armed forces special powers act now if you look at this afspa this is this has been one of the most controversial legislations that the union had uh, has implemented in certain parts now where is it functional this is important it is given here it is functional in nagaland assam manipur parts of arunachal pradesh a small belt in meghalaya and the entire state of jammu kashmir except the districts of kargil and leh now uh, in this news i've marked certain keywords these keywords can be highlighted like uh, you have you have the locations given you have the decision of home ministry to give its uh, give up its power regarding the implementation of afspa in assam next here there is a keyword that, that you must be aware that the center had signed a framework agreement with a group called nsc nim now this nsc nim is national socialist council of nagaland isaac muwa it's it's a insurgency largest insurgent group present in uh, nagaland which is fighting for greater nagaland it is mentioned here that their demand is greater nagaland and there was a framework agreement very uh, recently that was signed by the government with this group now apart from this what we have is a uh, recent revocation of afspa in meghalaya and then uh, the information about tripura is also mentioned here now this is something that is important for this exam apart from this regarding afspa Uh, it's it's the minister of state for home affairs he is saying that uh, in the case of assam they have given it uh, the power to the state to decide whether they want to continue afspa or not uh, the stats are mentioned some stats which which can give you an idea about the reducing uh, intensity of casualties and the armed insurgency in northeast the next slide next news is about uh, farmers now see this is a classic case where the news may not be very important but the issue behind it is crucial here uh, the issue is about dairy farmers right the dairy farmers in the state of maharashtra uh, maharashtra is known as a hub for cooperatives however when we consider about milk now we we know that anand milk union limited amul is a very significant uh, example very successful example of milk cooperative this model has not been very successfully replicated in maharashtra and the reason is you can see here the prices that are paid by farmers uh, the prices that are paid to farmers by the cooperatives are very low per liter whereas the selling price of milk in the market may be around 42 to 45 liters uh, per liter 45 rupees per liter and here the price that farmers get is less than half of it so this is something that the farmers are not happy with and they are demanding it so this issue is crucial next news this is these are the small bits uh, uh, that are given in the newspaper but nevertheless there are certain keywords that are crucial here the first being thunderstorms right we need to go back to geography and study what are thunderstorms how do they originate in which season they are uh, they affect uh, india and which regions of india are affected by them and uh, all the associated information that is from the core subject of geography <coughs> next we also look at the next keyword it is norwester now here the news is not very crucial but the same thing the concept of norwester the local wind that comes in india uh, especially during the season of pre monsoon period is important you can go back to your ncrts and study this concept of norwester uh, now the next news this is not a again this news is not important but the point is the pregnant women denied admission by hospital this goes against human rights this goes against the constitutional right this goes against the legal mandate given to hospitals even the supreme court judgments that say that no hospital is to deny admission to any patient which is in uh, need of urgent treatment uh, i would like to point out i being an mbbs doctor and having worked in government medical college nagpur uh, i uh, i know what happens in a uh, public facility uh, the load of patients is so high that these incidents do happen sometimes and that is the case that we see here in this uh, news also right next uh, again 
we are not interested in what uh, chandra babu naidu is announcing like dharma porotam against the center or all but the keyword here is the special category status that is being demanded by chandra babu naidu for his uh, state of andhra pradesh here the, you need to know what is special category status uh, the recent decision of the finance commission to uh, scrap the status with states in india were uh, given the status and what was the criteria that used to be used for deciding this status next uh, now this is a news about three pool scissors now here you know that any election in india uh, becomes a hot ground for the distribution of cash liquor and other items for example it may it may be television sets or any electronic items uh, here uh, you can see that the scissors have uh, given so much amount or they have uh, brought uh, forward so much amount this clearly raises a question mark on the claim of the government that the demonetization or the steps taken by government after that have made the process of elections more transparent and reduced the role of cash uh, in the process of elections uh, apart from that we need to understand the model code of conduct this is a keyword you need to you need to Uh, study this in detail that who gives this conduct what is the model code how it is implemented does it have a legal status or not so and and what is the stand of election commission of india on this code right next uh, again this is a news which uh, is important from the point of view of constitution now quota based on religion is not allowed by constitution there have been certain cases of certain state governments have give, uh, having given this quota but the, those cases are in supreme court they are sub judice right about reservation yes under 164 uh, constitution does permit positive discrimination for certain backward socially and educationally backward uh, classes however uh, constitution nowhere mentions quota based on religion here the telangana telangana government uh, seeks to hike this quota also they also want to breach the limit of 50% uh, reservation that was specified by supreme court of india in 1992 indira samani judgment right so this is the background of this news next uh, here again uh, the complete news may not be important it is about the buddhist circuit in five states it's the prime minister uh, honors that university right but that that news is not important what is important is the buddhist circuit in five states so what you are going to know is which states the circuit is being implemented and next uh, the question may be asked in mains regarding uh, buddhism anyway in our ancient art and culture ancient india art and culture ancient history these questions are asked and about the uh, you can use this information in essays or your answers regarding the role of buddhist values or values espoused by buddha preached by buddha in solving the problems of present world next this is a news about village electrification now this is an issue which is in news prime minister recently claimed that 100% electrification have been has been achieved in india especially rural this was din dayal upadhyay gram jyoti yojana however there is a controversy and that controversy has been highlighted here the definition of electrification it is given here right i have highlighted this definition part and this is the controversy that only 10% of village households and all the public utilities if they are electrified uh, the government counts the entire village as electrified however 90% nearly 90% of the households still do not have electricity considering this the government has brought in a new scheme uh, it has it is mentioned here right it is pradhan mantri uh, sahaj bijli har ghar yojana which is called as saubhagya scheme right so now uh, this is a new scheme you need to know the uh, original scheme din dayal upadhyay gram jyoti yojana apart from that you are supposed to know the saubhagya scheme and the present statistics that are given here right uh, that have mentioned about the status of electrification in india the next news is about agrarian crisis we have very recently seen a news where the milk producers were uh, the farmers were Uh, protesting against the government for hiking the price that they get from the cooperatives for selling milk uh, this is again the 
second news about agrarian crisis it is about if you look at the demands in short it is it is complete loan waiver now this is a very controversial issue because economists and uh, rbi personnel they do not support loan waiver which is a purely political <coughs> move the reason being <coughs> once you give a loan waiver it sets up a habit where the farmers borrow money and use it not only for agricultural purposes but but for other reasons also and after borrowing they do not repay back now you know that the banking system in india is affected by npas what we know as non performing assets this has resulted into or snowballed into a twin balance sheet problem which is holding the indian economy back and its potential is reducing so we need uh, the, the, this demand for complete loan waiver is a bit controversial the second demand however can be supported it is higher minimum support price at least 50% higher than the total cost of production now this is the demand that derives its origin from ms swaminathan committee report uh, on indian agriculture so you know ms swaminathan he is an agriculturist and was a member of rajya sabha also and this is a person who has given this recommendation uh, which says that the farmer should receive msp Uh, which is at least 50% higher than the total cost of production and this is a justifiable demand next we move to an issue about left left wing ex- extremism now in upc mains there is a question on naxalbari and malkangiri so anyway these regions geographically you should you should understand why nationalism is rising there and and there was also a question in the past about the changing ideological nature of this left wing extremism movement now you can see why the ideology is changing earlier it was fighting for farmers and peasants but now peasants and workers and now see they are threatening the construction firms involved in road laying and they are also threatening the tendulu procures with dire consequences if they do not pay up adequate payment now the point is on one hand they are trying to uh, protect the interest of the uh, tribals but on the second other hand what are they doing they are they are opposing developmental activity that occurs there road laying especially now you may you can understand why they are opposing road laying it's a simple reason that once ro- road all weather uh, connectivity uh, is uh, established it is easy for the security personnel and the government uh, machinery to move in in these areas reducing their hold on the tribal uh, hamlets so uh, somewhere they are they are moving towards violence and anti state anti developmental stand which needs to be opposed tooth and nail the next issue here is about judiciary we have come to the edit editorial page the <coughs> the article is about uh, the recent decision of the government to oppose the elevation of justice kem joseph on specious ground no i don't want to get into the detail but of this uh, article what do you need to study as an uh, aspirant for civil services first and foremost you need to understand the balance or the separation of power the system of checks and balances which is given in the constitution so neither the parliament nor the judiciary is supreme in india here the the writer who is kapil sibal who is a political person and a person who is in opposition now opposition party he is saying that the supreme court can reassert its supremacy in the matters of judicial appointment supremacy right but the point is constitution nowhere gives supremacy to the supreme court in the matter of judicial appointments if you look at the original articles mentioned in the constitution regarding judiciary it clearly gives an upper hand to the judi- the executive in appointment of judges and you need to understand that supremacy in the process of appointment is not related directly to the issue of independence of judiciary in india the judi i I'll, I'll, I'll give an example of cag upsc members or even the members of election commission of india who are totally independent in their functioning though they are appointed by the executive they are all executive appointments same was the scheme in the constitution for courts however through a uh, number of judgments the the court has taken uh, uh, some sort of primacy like you know the collegium system so they have evolved a system of collegium which was not mentioned in the constitution and the courts have uh, tried to bring in primacy in appointment so nowhere in the world judges appoint judges but that happens in india and and this is something that you cannot support right if you if you think about the constitution uh, yes
yes uh, the two major important issues are also mentioned here it is about seniority and it is about regional representation seniority or regional representation are one of the criteria or among the criteria for elevation of judges from high court to supreme court however they cannot be the sole criteria because merit or the performance past performance of that particular person has also to be counted you can see here i have mentioned the total uh, sanction strength it is 31 uh, whereas only 25 are uh, presently occupying the uh, benches of supreme court and then uh, this statement you can use something in an essay also a judiciary that capital, uh, capitulates is the greatest danger to democracy now this raises a question about uh, i mean um, emergency where indira gandhi uh, had given or former prime minister had given a concept of committed judiciary now uh, understand one thing uh, under this separation of powers uh, no one even executive legislature or judiciary has an upper hand there is a system of beautiful system of checks and balances given by the constitution of india you need to support njac which is a very good state by the government where uh, the judiciary and the government could have shared power in selection and appointment of judges however giving complete power in the hands of government you see what has happened here this is this is this is this opposition of government seems to be political because this particular judge uh, had given an adverse judgment against the government in Uttarakhand uh, presidential rule application case. But I also do not think that we can support giving complete uh, powers of appointment autonomy to judiciary because judges appointing judges would give rise to nepotism, favoritism, corruption and it's, it's opaque, non-transparent. We understand that it is rightly said that justice sh uh, need not only be done it should also be seen to be done right so with this we move forward to the next uh, piece of news it is about the korean peninsula you know that uh, kim jong-un has been uh, venting out a lot of anger nuclear fire and he's threatening the stability not only of east asia but the entire world now there is a positive development where South Korean President Moon Jae-in and, and this is this person is uh, this example is good because he has been persistently supporting nuclear denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula and converting into a no war zone. Uh, Donald Trump was bigger threat but now uh, somehow it has been worked out that China and US are together working with both of the Koreas to establish peace in the Korean Peninsula. But we have reasons to be a bit pessimistic because 2007 joint declaration had expressed similar sentiments but then still the peninsula became a very prominent zone of tension recently. The recent summit is mentioned here and likely to press US to withdraw. Now this is something that the Kim Jong-un uh, North Korean uh, dude can demand but it's highly unlikely that us or even south korea would agree to something like this next piece of news is about bhagat singh now we know there's a there's a term uh, called man ki asha now that is what is between india and pakistan that we can hope for peace but then the governments do not seem to be in a position or uh, they do not seem to be prepared to actually give a, a chance to peace uh, between two countries this news item uh, is about Bhagat Singh who is revered as an idol and celebrated across the border in India as well as in Pakistan. This is uh, because of his ideology which is given here. I have mentioned here that the concept of universal brotherhood that he highlighted and championed uh, is something that can be uh, really uh, useful for you uh, in your preparation. Apart from this, uh, the central point of including this article here is this, this shared theme is important. That when India and Pakistan have very bad uh, have relations which has turned very bad in the recent past, we need to search for <coughs> we need to search for points we need to search for things that can give a sense of shared brotherhood between the two countries. We need to highlight the similarities and uh, play down the differences between the two countries if we really need to establish peace in South Asia. With this, we move forward to the next news. Uh, now this, this this news is not very important 
but this is a classic case study where persons who are in authority should control their tongue and actually let their actions speak louder than the words uh, this is an example of uh, Biplab Dev who is Tripura uh, chief minister and who has been making uh, out of turn comments uh, which are giving a lot of fodder to the media but then here media acts as a double edged sword tearing down the take takeaway that we have is uh, understand that Tripura went in the hands of BJP after so long and this mandate given by voters was not for such uh, unthink or unthought comments but rather for uh, governance good governance so that is because Tripura uh, is I mean very good in social indicators but these are not matched by economic front so the infrastructure income this does not match up with the social indicators of Tripura and I think it's a high time that the uh, authorities especially uh, high authority like chief minister should focus on governance instead of making loose comments next this is a very important issue in this news local democracy it speaks about the 73rd and 74th constitutional amendment that was made in 93 94 in the constitution of india this was called democratic decentralization it was supposed to make villages as self-governing centers right several governing village panchayats the problems have been highlighted in this news we need to understand why this has not succeeded the writer uh, very correctly has highlighted that there has been a lot of support from political class and bureaucracy for economic reforms however on the ground when it comes to local democracy local participation in politics and decentralization of governance there has been a complete reversal in the stand taken by the states the center and even the local level uh, bureaucrats there is a tendency towards centralization the funds the functions and the functionaries they are always uh, centralized and this hampers or obstructs hamstrings the performance of local governments in villages there are certain examples that how the schemes like MP lads uh, interfere the local governance. The constitutional articles have been highlighted there. The role of various finance commission is highlighted in this paragraph here. Ultimately, uh, this paragraph also gives us a clear indication uh, through statistics that the funds that are generated and available at local level in India are measly around 2% when we compare to the statistics in Europe and Americas. So it's a high time that and, and this question is important this year because you, you can see in the beginning here 25 years are mentioned. So UPC is fond of uh, giving weightage in the exam to issues that have completed certain anniversaries. So this is 25 years of implementation of this 73rd and 74th amendment. So uh, this is very important issue and you can go back to your uh, basic polity and read, uh, read the basics about these amendments and uh, this article uh, also highlights the issues involved so uh, it's important the next news is about cost of pollution now we understand that pollution is considered as a health problem however it also is an environmental problem apart from that it also has an economic cost for the uh, economy because it reduces the productivity of the labor you can see here uh, the writer has given an example about environmental Kuznets curve now this is an hypothesis which suggests that as per uh, as per capita income grows the increase in environmental impact hits the maximum and thereafter declines now I'd like to explain uh, what the writer is trying to tell you is uh, as the uh, economy develops this is the impact and I'm drawing a chart this is the impact on environment but then there is a threshold maximum point so your economy is growing but then the impact is coming down now so India is somewhere here the article uh, argues that India needs to move to the second stage where we continue developing economically but the impact on environment goes down right so uh, what I'm trying to say is we implement polluter pays principle and we carry out development which is called sustainable development which doesn't harm the environment right it has been mentioned in this paragraph clear so with this we move to the next uh, issue now this is a classic north-south divide issue we have been hearing uh, that 
demographically the southern states of india have done well to control their population however now the recently uh, the criteria set up by 15th finance commission for dividing the revenue between the states this has created a lot of heat the point of contention is the 15th finance commission or use for use of 2011 census as opposed to 1971 census as a base year for determining revenue distribution now for those who do not understand this the point is if you use 1971 census and the population figures obviously the division is balanced between north and south if you are going to use 2011 census the rate of growth of population in the four southern states has drastically reduced they have been very successful in controlling their population so that their their birth rates are as comparable to developed countries however when you consider 2011 census you see that the north northern states of india especially up bihar and the other so called bimaru states have not been successful in controlling their population their populations have grown exploded and now if the 15th finance commission decides to divide the revenue as per 2011 census it's a clear cut case where there is it, it's like a discrimination against the southern states punishing them for their successful control of population by reducing their revenue and the revenue goes more to those states where population is more so somehow it is a perverse uh, logic that you reward the states which do not control their population and you somehow punish the southern states who have brought their population or demographic attributes or indicators in line with more or less developed countries right so uh, the article also speaks about interstate council article 263 so you need to study this in detail also zonal councils are mentioned these are favorite areas for upsc to ask questions next uh, there is a there is a small column conceptual this is important the terms mentioned here you can use it even if the question does not does not come directly in the exam you can use this uh, information in your answers either in gs or in sa so labor holding is mentioned here this means what generally it is said that as the economy goes into recession the companies lay off their employees and reduce employment however labor holding is a phenomena where even in recession the companies do not lay off the employees and maintain them there may be various reasons for that it may be the businesses may find it difficult to hire the workers again or the legal and emotional hardship uh, involved in laying off the employees right so the next uh, you are you must be aware that in january there was an incident where four uh, judges of supreme court took a press conference it was unprecedented that they became came public uh, and they criticized the chief justice of india and the criticism was based on the virtual unchecked powers of the cgi as master of roster to allocate sensitive cases to preferred benches their point was that the chief justice of india uses this discretionary power to give cases only to certain judges and important cases are not being allocated to other judges keeping this controversy aside why did i include this article as important it is basically uh, you need to understand when you when you want to enter government you need to respect the system i don't say that you capitulate to it or do not stand up to the principles but the point is you are not supposed to go public because if you go public it affects the institution more right so uh, you should follow the proper channels to bring the con- the the grievances forward and get them addressed next it's about oath uh, in upsc prelims also questions have been asked about oath uh, you need to understand that the one schedule in the schedules of constitution deals with this oath uh, you also need to study the different oaths taken by different uh, dignitaries who uh, who gives them that oath right so all this apart this article 
are mentioned here constitution go through that and then uh, this this here the court says that measure should be taken to videograph the swearing in or oath taking no dispute arises in future right so generally this oath is given a very serious uh, position in our constitution so this is important for your exam next section 124 of ipc now this has been one of the most controversial pieces of legislation the reason being this is a british era uh, section in uh, our indian penal code this is a section which allows for sedition i mean they book people for sedition right it's, it's like a war against the state now you can see in this article that the chhattisgarh police have booked a journalist here against uh, for again okay, for uh, <coughs> sedition against the uh, country and it was basically because of some uh, facebook post that he had forwarded he says that i expressed my thoughts on the condition of judiciary today and that is why i am being targeted now this is uh, this can be deemed as a misuse of this provision to silence dissent and criticism coming from citizens or the fourth pillar for that matter so this is a very serious issue which we need to oppose next it's it's an issue about karnataka flag uh, very recently there was a controversy uh, because as per the constitution of india we have a national flag but the constitution is silent whether states can have their separate flag or not karnataka had promoted its own flag only the state of jammu kashmir is allowed under article 370 to have its own flag but then uh, karnataka government recently brought out a flag and there were a number of issues see it, it is issue about the state flag it has uh, a cultural policy to promote language and culture it is 100% local reservation for d group employees it is about opposition of hindi signage in metros and stations uh, the state is pushing for conduction of the central recruiter exams in kannada kannada chair at the jnu and then it is about the financial autonomy to the state opposes the terms of reference of 15th finance commission so you can see overall what is happening it is not just cooperative federalism or competitive federalism a different sort of model is being evolved where regionalism that to cultural regionalism is uh becoming important in deciding center state relations uh, now all the center state relations in polity you need to study very clearly and your stand on the state flag can be very clear that constitution is silent either it neither allows or it neither opposes having a, a state flag so uh, if any state decides to have a state flag Uh, and still under the sovereignty or uh, i mean it it, it it accept the supremacy of the constitution and it is not going for insurgency or secession it just wants to express its culture through having a flag then i don't think it should be uh, opposed there's no reason for that right so next issue is about crowd funding now this is a term which is which is being in news crowd funding is a buzzword you need to uh, understand this concept very nicely and uh, this article speaks about use of this crowd funding for elections you know for elections uh, election is the fountain head of corruption in india all the black money finds its way during elections uh, to bribe the voters and for uh, it spend during that election now the point is this is a very novel model uh, it was used very recently by dalit activist jignesh mewani in gujarat or, or uh, it's not just urban it is being used in rural india also now this is positive because if with the technological uh, tools and platforms available if innocent or rather uh, uh, honest candidates well meaning candidates who are educated are able to use this technological platforms to uh, collect money through crowd funding for their election campaigns it will definitely make the process of elections in india more transparent bring in people who have very less bank balance and not uh, and are not crorepatis and reduce the corruption in public life so this is a very very uh, positive news here next uh, the issue of terrorism and afghanistan now though both have become synonymous one uh, this this article raises a issue about the rise of taliban and is uh, islamic state uh, its branch in afghanistan 
after have Afghanistan having been uh, under the control of US for so long. So this raises a question mark on the intervention of United States of America, which was uh, declared by George Bush as war on terror. But then after so many more than a decade, uh, US seems to have lost its war against terror because uh, what you can see is the both groups are very strong in Afghanistan and they are rather competing. It's it's kind of competition to gain prominence in Afghanistan. Second thing is about safety of journalists. A recent attack killed uh, 60 people were killed and number of them were journalists. Uh, Afghanistan has become one of the most dangerous countries for journalists. Uh, just because the issue is about journalists and their safety, we cannot forget that in our country also, India is highlighted as one of the danger countries for journalists, especially when it comes to the journalists exposing the state or speaking truth to power. Next. Next issue that is important is the deal between uh, the P plus 5, uh, P5 plus 1, or, I mean, it was Iran plus the other six countries which came together to sign a deal. The deal was called the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action. It was a deal which was led by Barack Obama, the former president of the United States of America. And the aim of the deal was denuclearization of Iran. Right? It was called the Iran nuclear deal. Now what has happened is, when Trump has come into power, he is not supporting the deal and he is... Uh, still contemplating whether to support the agreement or to scrap it. However, uh, as you can see here, most of the countries who are party to the deal intend to continue the deal because that is the only way you can control the nuclearization of Iran. Even U Iran's president uh, has rejected any hope of rewriting the nuclear deal and here is a statement made by an authority in Iran who says that Iran can re-enrich uranium and make a bomb when needed right so the point is uh, we need to support peace and in that interest this joint comprehensive plan of action is a very important piece of agreement this needs to be supported even america if it goes out uh, practically speaking america unilaterally cannot scrap the deal because it was not a deal between america and iran it was a deal between a group of nations and iran so America unilaterally cannot scrap it and our stand should be very clear that we should speak to Iran, respect the deal and move forward for a denuclearization of the entire, not only Iran, the entire world. Next issue is again a burning issue which is Palestine issue. Uh, we'll not go to the root of that issue but the point is presently uh, this is the solution that is being given to that for that issue, two-state solution to the Israel-Palestine dispute. So. There will be Israel and there will be Palestine, two countries in West Asia. Uh, America, though on paper supports two-state solution, it practically supports every move of Israel. And that is the reason that emboldened Israel is involved in constructing illegal settlements into West Bank area that it, it has shares with Palestine. This issue of illegal settlements has been a thorn in the peace process. India has accepted Palestine. Palestine has also received an observer non-state uh, status in UNESCO, which is a arm of United Nations organization. Uh, from our part, we should support the peace process and the two-state solution. Here, the contentious issue is about Jerusalem, Israel's capital. That is the problem area because Jerusalem uh, is demanded as capital by both the countries. Both countries want Jerusalem and US seems to support Israel's claim to Je on Jerusalem which is opposed by Palestinians. So uh, we move forward. The next issue is about humanitarian crisis. It's, it's, it's the Rohingya issue. You are aware that Rohingyas are Muslim migrants from Rakhine or Arakan province of Myanmar, West Myanmar, which were, uh, which had to flee Myanmar because of the uh, action of Myanmari military uh, on this group, on, on this people, and these people through boats, through land, or through I mean through water, they are moving to Bangladesh, they are moving to India, they are moving to uh, northeastern India. Uh, 
so UN Security Council Bangladesh is requesting the UN to ask Myanmar to take back Rohingyas. Myanmar does not accept Rohingyas as a citizen and it considers them as Bengalis uh, who have migrated illegally from Bangladesh to Myanmar. Uh, now ideally uh, our stand should be uh, pro-human rights and we should support uh, the reinstatement and not deportation of Myanmar. Right? Myanmar should accept Rohingyas as their citizens as legal citizens and give them uh, citizenship and associated rights. Next, a very related issue, UK and immigration. United Nations, United uh, Kingdom has been a country which has been favored by students, by uh, software professionals and uh, immigrants who want to, who dream for a better life. However, it is one of the countries which has very strict stand on immigration. Now, that is a burning issue. Uh, some keywords are here. The Windrush generation, we can, we can read this here. Right. This policy has been, the recent governments of uh, UK have been uh, hostile to immigration. That was also the reason why we had a Brexit, that Britain came out of European Union because of this. Uh, one of the reasons was this migration. So uh, overall, we can see a wave of anti-globalization or protectionism in the Western world where they do not allow people to enter their territories and maintain a very strict criteria for allowing immigration and citizenship. The next article is about ease of doing business. World Bank in its report ranked India 146 in trading across borders. So this is what Ministry, Commerce Ministry wants to improve, to clear import consignments of food products in about 48 hours at ports of India. Now, you must be aware that India has 14 major ports and more than 200 minor ports. These ports are notorious for the turnaround time. This means Indian ports and the customs cargo handling is so slow that it takes a lot of time for the ships to uh, upload, download the material and the material to pass through the customs. So that decreases the ease of doing business. It's a disincentive for business. If you really want to increase the imports and exports, we need to uh, streamline these procedures. That is what the ministry is uh, speaking. Next, it's about pharma exports. These are the news for economy, pharma exports. Uh, now, considering all the pessimism in the global world regarding economy, declining export, uh, export uh, and, the, and the decreasing trade, this is a bright spot, pharma sector. India is one of the leading producers of pharma, uh, pharma products in the world. We export these products not only to uh, the world, but also I mean, in Africa and uh, the developing countries. Now, uh, here the numbers are given. These are the major markets that we have, right? So you need to go through all the stats and uh, focus on pharma industry because it's considered to be a sunrise sector, very strong sector. But then this is a sector that has been afflicted because of intellectual property issues and issues of sanitary and phytosanitary measures in developed countries. Even China, countries like China, Europe, America are not very uh, keen on opening their markets to Indian pharma products. Uh, India internally has to also take care of the issues regarding uh, the quality certification, clinical trials and the production of quality medicines uh, and making them affordable to population. Uh, next issue is about telecom sector. Now, this is, this is a factual information. Telecom Commission is the highest decision-making body in the Department of Communications. Uh, the issues that are in news are in-flight connectivity and net neutrality. You need to uh, focus on these two issues. Apart from that, there is need for an ombudsman to address the grievances in the sector. And then there is a, uh, also a keyword of spectrums. Right? You need to understand what is spectrum. Uh, the ISRO satellites launch uh, various uh, ISRO, ISRO rockets launch various satellites. These satellites have uh, transponders and these transponders give you spec spectrum belonging to different bands. Next. Presently, the whole country is reeling under fuel prices, increasing fuel prices. However, the, this news makes it very clear that the government is not uh, of the opinion that it will reduce the excise duty on petrol and diesel which was demanded by public 
here some bits of information are important lpg is the only commodity that is subsidized presently uh, the present increase in prices is because of geo uh, geopolitical tensions the central government levy is now here the statistics are given that for every liter of petrol or a diesel that you purchase at the petrol pump central government and state government uh, they put this excise duty sales sales tax vat right and because of this uh, the landing price for example of petrol at the petrol pump may be around 38 rupees but then we pay approximately 80 rupees on petrol so more than half of the cost that you pay per liter for petrol or diesel goes in taxes to state and central governments the point is why they are not ready to decrease this taxes because it hurts their revenue right that is clearly mentioned here it hurts their revenue generation second the reason uh, i mean second you can also see that india has one of the highest Uh, retail prices of petrol and diesel among south asian countries and taxes are more than half of the rates at pumps right so this is this is the problem uh, here that the uh, and the second um, important issue was that there was a demand that petrol and diesel should be brought under gst but the state governments do not support such a move because then their major source of revenue would be taken away from them ideally our stand should be that it should also be brought under the goods and services tax Uh, this is a news which is not very crucial but the point is the keywords are important you need to understand the role of this uh, biocon which is a company based in bangalore this company produces biotechnological products the words used are biologics insulin glargen or biosimilars so these are all keywords which you can go back uh, find on internet and prepare your own notings or jottings on them next the next news is about multi brand retail Uh, you can see walmart it's it's the world's biggest chain multinational chain of uh, mul uh, multi brand retail stores in india at present we allow only 51% fdi in multi brand retail 100% is uh, allowed in small brand retail single brand retail so uh, this article raises a question on the functioning of walmart throughout and the competition it is facing because of amazon or other online platforms article also mentions why this flipkart logo article also mentions the present move by walmart to capture or acquire flipkart so that it gets a pie out of the revenue that is generated in developing countries through this uh, e-commerce on multi brand retail india uh, is very clear the central government has permitted 51% fdi in multi brand retail but it is not willing to give 100% complete go also it has led the decision on state governments whether they should allow multi brand retail chains like walmart to operate in their territories or not the reason being it is said that if we allow 100% fdi in multi brand retail and if chains like uh, walmart or carrefour of uk they occupy the market they are going to break the uh, retail market of india completely so that uh, there will be lot of job losses in india next we are looking at uh, a news about engineering exports see engineering goods are one of the top products that are exported throughout the country uh, our main market there there mentioned here it is us uk bangladesh and germany so uh, we have certain goods like gems and jewelry uh, engineering goods uh, petroleum products which are refined as the major products that uh, we export every year and have a surplus in them here the news is not important what is important is the basics we need to prepare cng nicely hybrid technology and then the electronic vehicles for example what could be the keywords what is the composition of cng what what different fuel combinations can be used in hybrids in electric vehicle what type of batteries are used so these are the questions that upsc would be interested in uh, again here is a key uh, word here it's called wada word anti doping agency now uh, wada and its clauses and then we have national Do anti doping agency nada also so you need to prepare this when it comes to sports uh, the last page olive ridley turtles now you you are very well aware that in upsc the weightage of environment science and technology has been on the rise environment is something that is given a very heavy weightage consistently in all the papers including prelims or mains so 
there have been questions on always they lose uh, in the past so these are the turtles which are which come to india every year uh, one of the places of their nesting is india and especially it is gahirmata odisha's gahirmata beach the river is rushikulya rushikulya river in that area the river is rushikulya river and the beach is gahirmata so olive ridleys are endangered uh, uh, turtles who uh, nest here these are the turtles who nest here and this this news is about the present climate uh, which doomed the hatchlings right so we need to prepare the species their iucn status location of gahirmatha the river rusikulya that i mentioned and other places in india or elsewhere where the olive ridleys uh, go for nesting next it is a news of lake victoria lake victoria is a lake which is present in eastern part of africa it shares border or it's at it's at the tri junction between three countries called kenya uganda and tanzania this lake victoria is the origin of white nile uh, river right which is which which combines with blue nile to make that nile proper river now lake victoria the news is regarding uh, the threat of extinction of biodiversity in this lake which is a freshwater lake iucn is a keyword here uh, the statistics are mentioned and and see this uh, news regarding lake victoria species being threatened is not a, uh, is not the only place which is where biodiversity is threatened every lake you you speak about uh, loktak lake you speak about sambar you speak about char lake most of the lakes in the world are facing the same prospect with increasing uh, you, intervention of humans by economic exploitation and construction of dams on the sources of rivers right next uh, this is a news about led lights uh, and and they increasing the risk of cancer now see for upsc such news are not important completely why because th- this this finding is not very crucial that blue light because this is not a conclusive report uh, it is not a report by who which clearly says that yes blue light results into cancer what we need to understand is we need to pick up the keywords so blue light what are the devices that give blue light what is blue light what is the energy composition of blue light as vis-a-vis the other uh, colors in the visible spectrum then uh, such such information given here so this is something that we are interested in uh, not the exact news right so uh, we move to the uh, next piece of information it is about nasa mission uh, the mission is called insight the full form is given here interior exploration using seismic investigations geodesy and heat transport the insight mission now you can see that take off from the west coast of us next it is marco is the experiment and then such cube cubes are technology and all all these keywords are important for the examination especially in prelims and even in mains they can ask you a question related to these keywords this was from my side about today's newspaper this is an analysis this is indicative will come with more lectures in future if you have enjoyed the session do give a feedback feedback to us rate us uh, five star if you like it and uh, review us and spread this uh, link so that even uh, your friends and other people who are preparing for this exam can get a benefit out of this lectures thank you and have a very nice day